Hi there! Sorry it took so long to make a video. School is up and running and it's kicking my butt already. By the way, the players at this university are absolutely insane. Anyway, I have some good news to announce. Number one, Chris Guarino gave me this awesome shirt. Thank you, Mr. Chris. Number two, this is me without lighting. Wait, this means I have lighting now. Yes, it is true. I've invested in lighting equipment. My room is very clean, as you can see. All I do is click on this little guy and what do you know, I have some light. It's really cool, I can turn down the sensitivity. That's a lot of light. And I can actually do yellow light as well. Now, I'm already a pretty yellow man, so using a yellow light does not look very great on me. I told you. Other good news. The Mario Kart Lick is now a mask. If you want to buy this, the link is in the description below. And of course, just to serve the tradition, I have to play the lick now while I'm wearing the mask. Oh God, I can't see anything. Ah, and that brings me to the final point. Saxologic Sayo's mouthpiece is officially out. Now this is a prototype. If you actually buy this, which the link is in the description, you not only get this cool engraving where it says Saxologic, on the other side there's going to be a really cool pattern, so... I really like how this sounds. They sent me several prototypes and this was the one that definitely won out of the bunch. If you want to expand your mouthpiece collection, I do recommend this. This is a really good mouthpiece. All right, so let's get started with the video. So there's a guy named Alex Hahn. He was part of the Monk Institute. He went to the University of North Texas and at one point he was actually in the one o'clock lab band. He has an Instagram with a giant following and he just plays so melodic and so technical. <laughs> He never sacrifices his melodic playing for technicality. He sounds so good. And a really cool thing, he's also a fantastic teacher. So I actually took a few lessons with him over the summer and I learned a lot. So after a few lessons, he had asked me if I wanted to help him proofread a transcription book of his coming up, which is now out, and transcribe three of the solos in there. And I was like, oh, uh, yes, yes, Mr. Han. So I'm gonna open up his book here. And man, there's a lot of good stuff in here, I'm telling you. It also has some really cool features. I'm about to show you. Okay, so once you buy the book, which link is in the description below, it costs $20 and it's gonna send you this email. Thanks for your purchase. And you'll notice it comes from Sound Slice. And man, this is the coolest thing ever. So I'm just gonna click a random one. Ladybird, I like this tune. Okay. So, as you see, we have all these fancy features. We can choose a measure and repeat a measure and we can loop it and play it over and over with the recording. It's probably not the measure you'd be practicing over and over, maybe a more harder measure. You can click this metronome button and it's gonna play the metronome with the recording and it'll show you the little orange line to always show you where you are with the real-time recording. This thing here shows you the audio waveform. Very fancy. This thing literally shows you the piano notes. Insane. This is super cool. And then this gear, you can control the zoom. You can decide if you want the notes there or not. I want the notes. Or if you want the chords there or not. To me, this really blew me away. You can literally change the transposition. This is gonna be really helpful as a source for just sight reading and hard keys. So I'll be using this book as a resource for a long time. And here are some other features. Really, really freaking awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and learn this tune. So first, let's hear Mr. Alex Hahn do it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh man, I love that ending. I've heard Charlie Parker do that a lot and it's so satisfying every time they do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and just walk through this solo. What is going on here? So this first part. So, in these first few lines here, the definitely the most important thing is this rhythmic concept. So right there, that last one I just sang, he kind of teased it and then he transitioned to the next melodic motif. Really, really slick, very melodic, and it's just all the right notes. Go ahead and analyze these notes. So we have five, 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 and then we resolve it to the third, four, three, four, five. So definitely that five is kind of the anchor point. Good voice leading with just a minor third interval here. We go up to the flat seven of that D minor seven. Flat seven, flat third. And then right here, that is an enclosure. These three notes here are an enclosure around this B natural, which is a third of this G7 chord. And then right here is another enclosure around the fifth of this A major seven chord. Ooh, so. Right here, we go up the A major scale again. Two, one, two, three, five. With very good voice leading, he was able to resolve with just a half step onto the fifth of this G minor seven chord. And then right here, boo da boo da boo do. It's a really cool way to go from a six and resolve to the third within your dominant seven chord. And then right here, this is a fully diminished chord starting on the third. And what's cool about this is when you do this, you actually outline your dominant chord with the flat nine in there. It takes away the one and puts the flat nine. And then the really cool thing about the flat nine, if this is your last note in a two, five, one in your five chord, it resolves downward with one half step to the fifth of your one chord, the F major seven. And what do you know? And now this new melodic motif, he does this again, just shifts it up to match the F sharp minor chord here. With very, very slightly different rhythm. Very, very similar rhythm and very similar notes, but he played the changes. So in the F major seven chord, he played C naturals and then G natural and F natural. And then when you go to the F sharp minor seven, he's playing C sharps, G sharps, and F sharps. So it's really cool. And then this next part, that he's literally just starting on the fifth of this B minor seven chord and then goes down. Five, flat three, two, one. So really you can see that E as an early entrance into that E7 chord, the one of this E7 chord. And then here, what do we have here? Ooh, okay, cool. So if you look at it, this is actually really simple. You have one, three, five, three of that C major seven. And then you go to the next chord, you have one, two, three, five. A very, very common pattern to play in a major seven chord. And then the next chord, you have one. And then you have an enclosure around the fifth of that A major seven. You're playing one, six, five, leading tone to that target note, and then target note. So he, he hangs on this nine, which is such a good note in a major seven chord, if you don't already know. Oh man, that's so cool. So he plays the same rhythm, but he changes the notes to fit the incoming changes. Very, very nicely executed. And this is all improvised, by the way, by him. You might think it's fake, but no, it's not fake. He really does this. When I took lessons from him, everything he played was really this melodic. It's truly crazy. Okay, still going. 
I really like that one. Okay, so starting on that G minor 7. He arpeggiates up. Leading tone into that flat third. Arpeggiates up to the 9. And then does this shape. And then approaches the flat 7 on that next chord. With that line. That's a fancy way to approach that sharp 4, which is a very key tone of the C7 alt. And right after that, we have a flat 9, that C sharp, which is another very key tone to a C7 alt. Ooh, really, really, really cool way to resolve a 5 to a 1. Ooh, ah, I'm stealing that. I'm stealing that. I'm sorry, Mr. Han. Okay, so when he resolves to this major 7 chord, he resolves very smoothly. If you play a flat 7 as your final note to a 5 chord, you can very smoothly resolve down with just one half step into the 3rd. It's a very common technique, and that's what he does here. And then he literally goes up, he just arpeggiates up diatonically. And literally this whole time he's playing F major 7, all this is diatonic. He's not playing any chromatic enclosure and it sounds so cool he just arpeggiates up and then he resolves down to the one and then he does one two three five it's that really common pattern that we saw earlier and then he goes Boo, i'm the worst singer ever he goes seven eight six seven five if you practice your thirds, that's not really that hard. And then at that final F, he resolves up to an F sharp. Now he's in F sharp minor 7 territory here. Ooh, that's very similar to the rhythms he did um, towards the top of the piece. He was definitely thinking of the big picture, this entire chorus. He wasn't just rambling random stuff. He had a melodic idea this entire time. That's why we're seeing familiar rhythms come back to us because he never really left them in his mind anyway. And then starting at this B minor seven. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that line. Okay, so what's going on here? Starting on that minor third, we just arpeggiate all the way up to the 11. And then he does this really cool thing. So, so those notes work in both of these chords, but it sounds cool because those notes transforms their function. Even though they're the same notes, the chords are different. So their function are different, so they sound different even though the notes are the same. That was really confusing the same. So that first D was a minor third in this B minor seven. So we go down to that C natural. And now this C natural is a flat 13 in this E7 chord, which is a really nice exotic color tone to use in a dominant seven chord. And then it goes back up to the D, which is no longer a flat third, this is now a flat 7. And then he goes back down, and then he travels down to the 3rd and plays an enclosure around the 5th of A major again. And then really simple patterns here. 5, 1, 3, 1, 3, 5. And then here, he's outlining an F major 7 chord starting on the 7. And then after he plays the fifth up top, he resolves with a whole step into the third of the B flat major seven chord. Once again, we're on the fifth of this A major seven, and then we play that really cool line I love. Whatever I just played sounded really similar to a thing on Braxton Cook's Somewhere in Between album. I don't remember which part. If you know what it is, please comment. All right, so let's go ahead and try this whole thing. 
I'm going to get rid of the video and then I'm going to change the zoom level so I can see the entire thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and try it. <coughs> One, two, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Ah, that's really satisfying. All right, well, there you have it. I hope you liked this video. I hope it helped. Go ahead and support Mr. Alex Han by buying this book and also support yourself by buying this book because this is an excellent resource. I'm definitely going to be using this a lot. The melodies are really apparent. They're very easy to understand. And there's a lot of melodic density in here. This is really good stuff. All right, thank you, Mr. Alex Han, and thank you all for subscribing. I'm at 60,300 subscribers. Oh. <laughs> And thank you for all the views on my last video. What the heck? In just nine days, it's already at 180,000 views. Are you, are you guys okay? Are you guys okay? All right, I'm going to close this video with maximum yellow light. Ouch, ouch. All right, have a good day.